When I assumed office 20 months ago, our country was facing tremendous economic challenges, escalating costs of essential household commodities, high fuel prices, rapid depreciation of the Kenya shilling, and spiraling public debt were threatening to ground our economy. My administration has worked hard and consistently so that today, the prices of essential commodities like unga have dropped from 240 shillings for a two kilogram packet to Kenya shillings 100, majorly attributed to our fertilizer subsidy program, the resilience of our farmers, and good rains that were given to us by God. During the period, we reduced the price of fertilizer also from 7,500 to 2,500. Petrol prices have come down to, from a high of 217 to now 187 a litre. The shilling has strengthened against the dollar from a high of 165 to now 127, 128. We have made significant progress in pulling the nation back from the brink of debt distress. Our debt situation is better managed and our budget now has space for investment and in programs aimed at easing the hardship on vulnerable people and creating opportunities for our young people. Our GDP grew by 5.6% last year, ranking Kenya among the 27 fastest growing economies in the world. Our inflation figures have fallen from a high of 9 and 8 in May last year to 5% in April this year. It is instructive for the nation to know that for every 100 shillings we collect, as taxes, we spend 61 shillings in debt service. We have paid Kenya's Eurobond debt that was borrowed in 2014 of $2 billion that has been hanging around our neck. We paid the last installment of $500 million last week. Today, Kenya's debt burden is much less, more sustainable, and we are on course to redeem our country from the discomfort of debt and assert our sovereignty. Early this year, Treasury had proposed a budget of 4.18 trillion. I did direct that it be reduced by 200 billion to come down to 3.99 trillion. The finance bill 2024 generated to actualize this budget underwent public participation, which resulted to concessions by which we agreed to drop proposals on VAT on bread, motor vehicle circulation tax, VAT on locally manufactured diapers and sanitary pads as well as excise duty on money transfer services, among others. The additional tax measures we had proposed in this year's finance bill were to raise money in the tune of 346 billion. When the concessions were, were made, subsequent to public participation that was undertaken by parliament, that came down to 200 billion. I had made this proposal, taking into account our situation and the priorities that are there. I want to thank the members of parliament seated behind me and those who voted yes for identifying the priority areas of our nation. Because when I made the proposals to parliament with my cabinet, 
we had certain critical priorities for the nation. Number one is our agriculture. We did make recommendation and part of the money we were going to raise from the finance bill was 10 billion shillings that will go to fertilizer subsidy, 18 billion shillings that would go to making sure that junior secondary school teachers, 46 of them, 46,000 of them would be confirmed on permanent and pensionable basis. We are very clear in our minds that education being the greatest equalizer, no child in Kenya should go to a school where there is no teacher or they, where there are no adequate teachers. It is because of that reason that in this finance bill also, we had committed to hire an extra 20,000 teachers. We also had envisioned, because of the program of last mile connectivity to homes, especially in rural areas, we had committed 14.5 billion shillings, 50 million for every constituency for the last mile connectivity. Because we realize that there are many people who today cannot go to hospital because they cannot afford, because they have no health insurance. We had committed six billion shillings to operationalize our universal health coverage plan that would make it possible for every citizen to have a health insurance, those who cannot afford to be paid for by the government of Kenya, and to also operationalize the chronic illness fund that would make it possible for those who suffer from cancer, diabetes, hypertension, to be able to go to hospital, be treated, and go home without being asked for any money. We also had planned to put in money for our coffee farmers to retire the heavy debts that are bedeviling our coffee farmers. We also had allocated money for our sugarcane farmers to make sure that our sugarcane farmers get out of the debts that they're in. We had also committed to our milk farmers two billion shillings to make sure that every farmer is paid a minimum of 50 shillings per liter to make sure that these farmers, very hard working citizens of our nation, get a fair return for their hard work and for feeding our nation. And that is why I commend these members of parliament for agreeing with us that all the priority areas I have mentioned were the right priorities to be funded. And by so doing, they supported the proposal to incorporate also the views of the people. These members of parliament came back to us after they went to listen to the people of Kenya. And they came back and reduced the budget on their own to by 146 billion sh shillings. Notwithstanding all these concessions, it has become evident that members of the public still insist on the need for us to make more concessions. 
And because I run a government, but I also lead people. And the people have spoken. I am grateful to all the members of the National Assembly who voted yesterday affirmatively for the Finance Bill 2024 as amended on the floor of the House to incorporate the views generated through public participation. And following the passage of the bill, the country witnessed widespread expression of dissatisfaction with the bill as passed, regrettably resulting in the loss of life, destruction of property, and disagreeation of constitutional institutions. On my own behalf, and on behalf of these members and many other Kenyans, I send my condolences to the families of those who lost their loved ones in this very unfortunate manner. Consequently, having reflected on the continuing conversation around the content of the Finance Bill 2024, and listening keenly to the people of Kenya who have said loudly that they want nothing to do with this Finance Bill 2024, I concede and therefore I will not sign the 2024 Finance Bill and it shall subsequently be withdrawn and I have agreed with these members that that becomes our collective position. <laughs> Accordingly, there is need for us as a nation to pick up from here and go into the future. And I am therefore proposing that because we have gotten rid of the Finance Bill 2024, it is necessary for us to have a conversation as a nation going forward. How do we manage the affairs of the country together? How do we manage our debt situation together? How do we work on the budget with the deficits that now exist together? And as I committed last Sunday, I will be proposing an engagement with the young people of our nation, <laughs> our sons and daughters, for us to listen to them, as I said on Sunday, listen to their views, listen to their proposals, their ideas, their concerns, and what they think we should do better as we go forward. I am also recommending a multi-sectoral, bipartisan, multi-stakeholder engagement from civil society, religious organizations, professional bodies, for us as a nation to speak to the future of our country, again together. And this will be on matters that are contained in the bill and matters that the people of Kenya have canvassed in the conversation that has been going on. In this regard as well, I am directing for immediate further austerity measures to reduce expenditure, starting with the office of the president, the entire presidency, and extending to the entire executive arm of government. Operational expenditure in the presidency be reduced to remove allocations 
for the confidential fort, reduced travel, hospitality, purchase of motor vehicles, renovations, and other expenditures. This will cover the entire presidency and also the executive arm of government. I also propose that equally, parliament, the judiciary, and county governments, working with the national treasury, also undertake budget cuts and austerity to ensure that we do live within our means, respecting the very loud message that is coming from the people of Kenya. And let me confirm that I have discussed with many uh, stakeholders. I will be meeting some of them uh, shortly after this meeting on charting a way forward that makes sure that we carry the whole nation in this very important journey as we go into the future as a country. Let me also confirm that as we deal with austerity, the loud message on dealing firmly, decisively, and expeditiously with corruption is a matter that we have discussed and we have agreed that it will take the front banner as we go into the future. We will continue to do this and carry out this very important conversation. And I want to remind us that we should proceed within the foundational principles upon which our nation is founded, namely constitutionalism, adherence to the rule of law, and respect for constitutional institutions. We must continue to operate within the parameters of the law. I thank you. I will uh, take a few questions, three questions to be specific. Thank you, Your Excellency. And the first question will start with Elizabeth Mutuku from TV47.